No, I'm when was it? When, when did you get your uh, I think it's 16? Was I 16? Was I 14? What was I? Boy, 14, 16? Anyway, in New York, I, I grew up in the South Bronx, as you may or may not know. And um, I grew up in Patterson Projects. And um, was, well, people don't really understand the South Bronx. Hey, let's pass that. Um, in the South Bronx, the real South Bronx, uh, we have, well, I had Yankee Stadium that I have to, that Ruth built. And I think it was 64. Must have been 64, six, maybe it was 66. Anyway, I got my working papers. So the first real legal job that I had, if, if you will, it must have been 66, um, was to uh, work the um, the Giants game, the New York Giants game. It was, uh, um, they needed a stadium. Uh, the Polo Grounds were just banned, uh, tore down or whatever it was. And so they were they were playing their winter season, they were playing their seasons at Yankee Stadium. Uh, the Yankees were the football, well, the Yankees were the baseball team in the summertime, and the back then, you know, the seasons weren't as long, and, and the football team was the Giants. Anyway, so that was my first year. That's why to this day I'm a Giants fan, and even though I work at Yankee Stadium, I'm actually a Mets fan because it's the first ticket I ever bought to a baseball game, but forget that part. Anyway, and uh, of course, before the game, they played the national anthem. And I was radical back when I was, what was that, 14, 16 years old, whenever it was. Um, and um, I never stood up for the, for the national anthem. I had my little, I, I she sell a hot chocolate, I had these big tanks on the back. And I went, I'd, I'd sit down, national anthem, pay, I'd sit down. <laughs> That's the way it was back then. No, it's no big deal. Nobody, you know, nobody bothered me, nobody hassled me or anything like that. I was never reported or anything like that. Okay, it was only for one season in there. But um, as it turns out, Seems like uh, right now in 2016, uh, low these many years ago, to almost that 50, whenever it is, <laughs> 50 years later, uh, this this football player from the San Francisco 49ers, the, the quarterback, Colin uh, Kaepernick, um, the decent quarterback, has good ratings. Um, he's taking a stand. Um, he does not want to stand, for, and he doesn't stand uh, when they play the the the, the national anthem. Uh, and people think he's, well, some, well, you know, how people are going to go crazy anyway. They, they had this whole thing about the flag. Anyway, let me just say a little, before I get back to, to Kevin, this excellent article that I got from The Intercept. Um, it was interesting how this flag thing really started to boom when uh, uh, John Carlson and Tommy Smith did their, their Olympics, you know, uh, uh, thing with the, with the, with the black uh, gloves and put their hands in the air one one with the other one at the Olympics in, uh, was that, 64? Uh, um, what people don't realize is that right after that, remember the, the, the way the Olympics go, the track and field goes in and the boxing is like the last, next, almost like the last kinds of events. And the boxing team, the boxing coaches made the, um, to, to, to try to counter that, they made the boxers the winning part. I think it was George Foreman or, or, or Ken Norton, somebody like that. They made them, the, all, all the winners, uh, carry little American flags around when they, when, they, when their boxing gloves, when they, after, when they won the name, when they round the ring like that. And back then, the, the people weren't draping themselves in these big flags that you see now, or whatever it is. There was no, no flag thing. This whole nation thing and divide and and, and really divide and conquer uh, is, is is interesting, especially since when you think of divide and conquer, we're, we're talking about the downtrodden. This is pro, this was a protest about the downtrodden versus whatever else. That's that's just in my mind. But let's get to the article. Anyway, this is article from the Intercept, and it deals with the. With the national anthem. Now, I learned this. Actually, I learned this a while ago from uh, Dr. Gerald Horn. Uh, maybe I'll put a link to that. Um, and he was saying that, hey, you should check out the national anthem. If you all stanzas, I think it was written first with f four stanzas, and then it was another stanza was added in the World War II or something, whenever, whenever, whenever it was. But the original uh, third stanza uh, reads, "No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of." flight or the gloom of the grave and the star spangled banner and triumph doth wave or land of the free and the home of the brave. That line there, that was the first time, the, 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 the refuge, no refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of the flight or the gloom of the grave. Um, this was uh, Francis Scott Key who was like, a, he's a lawyer or something, he was like, uh, it's like a failed poet. I mean, this is like 
his most famous poem, his only most famous poem. But he's also, well, anyway, the, see, this whole thing happened because it was a war, uh, you know, it was a war of aggression. Uh, really, what, what was supposed to really happen was that uh, the U.S. the U.S. was trying to take, do this land, like they always do the land grab. They're doing the land grab from England, you know, still antagonizing to beat up on England, uh, from Canada. So England sent their things, but one of the strategies of the English British Empire was to um, basically they, they they just guaranteed they said, hey, uh, this is a tactic, and it was it was successful. They wanted to recruit American slaves, and uh, they said, hey, if you fight for us, then you know, hey, you know. So anyway, the whole family found their way to the ships, you know, to these British ships outside of Washington, where they had burned the capital and whatever have you. And then the British had pled, pled uh, pledged all who accepted. Um, um, to do this deal, they pledged that no one would be, uh, would be given back to their owners. And uh, so that's what happened, because one of the things is that they were saying, hey, we got to get this Madison guy off of the, off of the throne, or whatever, however they, they think they, the language they use. But um, anyway, uh, so this is what it was really, really about. Uh, um, this, this, you know, the U.S. and, you know, and trying to do a land grab, and it didn't work out necessarily, uh, but then, then they had come to Rich Prochma. The reason my friend Sky Key was on the ship in the first place because they were doing this, this deal with, uh, with uh, the, the British said, okay, you got, you got some prisoners, we got some prisoners, we're going to make a prisoner exchange, but just before the last, just before it happened, they was going to do, do this last, like a, a whole lot of ships were coming in. Uh, so the British said, hey, the, look, no matter what happens, we're going to honor that deal, but you know, if we win, hey, you know, so they didn't win or whatever it is. So anyway, so, anyway so, um, but you know, this guy, uh, Francis Aki, he may have been uh, like a little myth because he owned slaves. So the reality of this, uh, as, as, as John Swartz writes in, in, um, in, uh, in the intercept.com, uh, intercept.com, look it up on the, uh, on the internet, uh, the reality was there were human beings fighting for freedom with incredible bravery during the uh, war of 1812. However, the Star Spangled Banner glorifies America's triumph over them, the people fighting for freedom, talking about the slaves and the hirelings, so I won't get to the hirelings right now, um, and, and, and turns, that into the re uh, turns that reality completely uh, upside down, transforming the killers, namely the Americans, um, or the U.S., into courageous freedom fighters. So anyway, so this thing goes on. So this is going to be an interesting football season. By the way, yes, I, uh, Colin Kaepernick, I'm with you. Yo, I'm with you, okay? Uh, because, you know, a lot of these cats that get this money, whatever, they have no consciousness. You know, they just go for the money. They, they have no principle. You know, they say, what about Team Harmony? Hey, the team is about winning the base, the, 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 the football game. It's not, it's not about uh, 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 what your individual, whatever it is, your individual freedom of, of expression, whatever it is, like that. And I think what happened with the Seattle Seahawks, and then they wouldn't give my man the ball. I won't get to that. Well, basically, cause he was, they, they didn't want the bad boy to, to, to win, but they, ah, it's sports, it's what it is, and then that's, that's all it is. And that's what I'm saying, me, T, for the Pattersons, take the train to the bed, letting you know what I only suspect.